Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Alex and Sum here with Unsum Tennis. And uh, I've been meaning for a little while. Uh, I've just figured I'd just shoot this right now and uh, get it over to, to everybody. Um, I had a tennis lesson when I was about 14, 15 years old that uh, really stuck out with me, to me. And uh, I'm gonna share that with you uh, today. And uh, I'll put a little bit of tennis on in the background or something to not bore you too much, because uh, otherwise it'll just be me talking. Uh, but there's a tennis lesson that I had, I remember when I was 14 or 15, um, and it actually, it wasn't even a tennis lesson of mine. Uh, I had my one hour lesson weekly, which is about what I was doing when I was 14. I had one private lesson per week for an hour. Uh, I had two days a week where I would train at uh, kind of a type of an academy or a camp uh, over there for a good two and a half, three hours after school. and couple other days we'd play matches or I'd hit with my dad or something like that but um, anyways to get to the point here about uh, the lesson that I had that really uh, stuck uh, with me and I'll explain to you uh, hopefully it'll be kind of clear to you why this lesson I still remember it now more than 20 years later uh, basically I had my lesson and then my coach had another lesson with somebody else after uh, an elderly lady and uh, I was sticking around with him because he was actually going to bring me back home after um, instead of just sitting down on the bench doing nothing, um, my coach decided to offer for me to hit in uh, in the lesson. And this was at the uh, Santa Monica High School tennis courts. Uh, I used to live right, right by Samo High uh, growing up in Santa Monica. And uh, we're on that last court over there by the freeway. I don't know why I'm saying the details in case anybody knows Santa Monica High School tennis courts. Uh, anyways, he asked me to hit in with the, the older lady, uh, older, I'm talking 60, 65 years old or so, um, around there, decent player, but, uh, you know, obviously you're limited in your mobility and things like that when you're, when you're that age. So, uh, so I came out and around 14, 15, to give you an idea, I was maybe top 20 player in Southern California and, you know, probably like a top 50, top hundred, uh, player nationally in the United States. So. I was just starting to kind of get a decent ranking, starting to feel like a respectable tennis player, starting to get sponsored, those kinds of things. So, you know, by no means was I some kind of phenom or whatever, but I was starting to get uh, to be respectable, let's just say, okay? And so my coach asked me to hit in with this lady. And uh, so I came out doing what I know how to do best, which is come out and basically, you know, bang, bang, hit the ball hard and uh, you know, just, uh, yeah, be, be just, th that's all I knew how to do basically. <laughs> and that's what I realized in that lesson. Um, basically I was hitting great shots, you know, like I knew how to hit and everything, but the lady on the other side, uh, wasn't getting anything out of it. Uh, she wasn't hitting any balls back. Uh, there was no, no interest uh, to her. And, um, so my coach asked me to just slow the tempo down a little bit, take some spin off of the ball. Uh, you know, make the shots a little bit more accessible to her. And uh, I'll be honest, I really, really struggled with that. And, uh, you know, throughout my coaching years, I've done the same exercise for lots of, uh, lots of tennis players who feel like they've gotten to that level because they can hit the ball hard. And, uh, you know, you kind of show them that without the control, the power is not worth as much as, uh, as you think it is, right? And uh, so, like I said, the reason why I think this lesson really just kind of stood out to me was because the, the, the image it kind of brings to mind is, uh, especially because my coach at the time, uh, his name was Francois Duquesse, French coach, uh, pretty well-known, well-respected coach, uh, passed away in 2016, unfortunately. Uh, but he's got a great book, it's written in French. If anybody understands French, you could read it. It's called Champion dans la tête. Uh, I have it, it's, uh, it's really great. Um, I recommend it to anybody. Not sure if you can find it in English. But anyways, uh, back to the point here. What it makes you remind me of is there's this scene in the movie uh, Alive. I don't know if that, that movie rings a bell to anybody, the, the rugby team that crashes the plane in the Andes and that has to survive there. And it's known that they were cannibalistic and stuff because that was the only way for them to survive. But anyway, there's a scene in that movie where at one point they realize nobody's coming to rescue them and they've got to leave and, and, and leave basically if they ever want to have a chance of, of surviving. So they take off, a uh, group of guys, uh, and uh, you know they get to the peak of this one summit thinking, 
you know, uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll be saved right across from the other side of this peak here. And uh, they get there and what do they see? They just see the whole range of the Andes out in front of them. And uh, at that moment, they kind of feel like, oh, we're dead, you know? Uh, it just seems so vast, basically, that it just seems unsurmountable almost, right? Um, and this tennis lesson that I'm talking to you about kind of had that same effect on me where I was like, I had kind of reached a, a certain summit. I had reached that beginner summit, so to speak, where, you know, I knew how to hit the ball, uh, I could put some pace on the ball, I started to develop some weapons, you know, maybe starting to hit over 100 miles per hour on the serve and those kinds of things. Uh, but what I didn't have and what was what I came to the realization of that day is this whole other array of, uh, of things that you need to be able to do if you want to know how to play tennis well. You know, control the, the pace of the shot, control the placement of the ball, control the height of the trajectory, control the amount of spin on the ball. Um, yeah, so that lesson basically had that effect on me where I was just like, look at all of these things that I have still... Uh, that I still have to learn, <laughs> that I've yet to accomplish yet. And uh, I'll be honest, it was kind of mixed feelings. It was a little bit uh, demoralizing, but at the same time, uh, how would I describe it? Just very interesting, uh, mind opening. That's why I still remember it to this day. And even talking to you about it right now, it kind of brings back all these, these, these memories and this thought of like, it, it just, like I said, it was a little, it was a little depressing in the sense that it was like, oh my gosh, I'm, I thought I was good. No, I'm not, or not, you know, <coughs> not nearly as good as, as I could be if I learned all of these things, right? So a little bit in that sense, but also very inspiring and motivational because sometimes, you know, when, when you're doing anything, whether it's in tennis or whatever, you get to this, this area and then you feel like you may be plateauing a little bit and it's fine. It's hard to to kind of make progress because you're not really sure which direction you're supposed to go, um, which areas you can make progress in and everything. And so as much as, like I said, it was kind of demoralizing overall, the impression uh, was, over, was positive because it, it kind of illuminated the way for me to be able to see, ooh, if I can do all of these things, I might actually be pretty good. <laughs> or I could, uh, you know, I could, I could be successful at this, uh, at this sport so anyways that's it basically uh, in a nutshell I'm not sure if there's much more to add uh, on to that but I thought I'd share it uh, just because surely in this day and age here today what are we we're December 1st 2021 right now uh, surely there's a lot of uh, juniors out there who are in that same boat that I was uh, you know and who might start to be feeling like they're getting pretty good and everything, and sometimes what I see uh, is that the juniors start getting a little bit complacent. Um, they get to a certain level, and now maybe they're like the, you know, the best player in their club or something, and uh, and maybe they start even getting a little cocky because they're like, ah, look at me, I can hit the ball hard, I can ace you, those kinds of things. Um, and it's just good for them to realize that, sure, okay, and without disrespecting, I mean, props to what you've been able to accomplish already however there's still <laughs> that's just one hill or one little mountain or summit that you've climbed and not only is there another one there's like 20 other ones that you've got to keep going there's so many hills to climb that you can't even see past <laughs> all of the hills and that's kind of you know uh, that's kind of what the journey of a tennis professional looks like uh, to me at least metaphorically speaking you know, it's just climbing mountain after mountain after mountain and uh, hoping one day to get to that, that promised land. Uh, very hard to get to because you can't see it. <laughs> you don't know where it is. Uh, I mean, you kind of know where it is. You know it's on the other side of those, those hills over there, but, uh, but you can't see it yet because the hills are blocking the view. And sometimes that's what's hard about, you know, trying to get to that elite level. Uh, you know, you get good and then it's easy to kind of feel lost. Uh, at some point, not not be sure where which way to go, or uh, you kind of lose motivation because you put in a lot of effort. But when you look around you, you feel like you haven't gotten anywhere, 
you're still in the middle of this giant mountain range and uh you know sure you've gotten to be a pretty good tennis player but you know you're not you're you're not number one in the world yet or you're not number one and whatever there's always room for that uh for that improvement so anyway if that story helps uh even just one person great you know uh like i said i i remember this lesson 20 plus years after the fact and uh and I've used it a lot of times as well in, uh, in when I'm giving lessons or when I encounter those players that are at a you know, reasonable level already, uh, but that, uh, that aren't sure how far, how much further they need to go uh, in order to get to reach their goals. And um, a lot of times just consider, just think to yourself, it's probably a lot more than what, you, what you're thinking in your head. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's better to think it that way and then be pleasantly surprised that, oh, maybe it wasn't as hard or as difficult or as long as I thought it would be than to think of it the other way around and always hope that it's just right around the corner and, uh, and keep getting disappointed when, uh, when you turn that corner and it's not there. Okay. So anyways, hope that helped you guys. And, uh, I've got another good, uh, story that I like to share, uh, coming up on the next video. I'll talk to you a little bit, uh, about a practice match, uh, that I remember against Maria Sharapova when she was about 12, 13 years old, I think. Uh, and it really stuck with me. And so that'll be what I'll share with you guys on the, uh, on the next video. Anyways, hope that helps and uh, we'll see everybody on the next video.